To be successful, Tilt Rotor will have to overcome two obstacles which have hindered city center to city center helicopter airline operations. Generally, it's been the high operating cost of helicopters and also the uh, absence of an infrastructure to take advantage of its capabilities. In general, uh, a tilt rotor will have two to three times the speed of a helicopter. So the productivity basically doubles or triples. So you reduce the seat mile cost by a third. Correspondingly, because it's a combination fixed wing and helicopter, enjoying the best of both worlds, its initial investment cost probably be somewhat higher than a comparable helicopter. But overall, the benefits of lower operating cost and higher speed will bring the seat mile cost down, will be competitive with fixed wing to the extent that the, if the infrastructure must be in place to permit you to fly center city to center city. The advent of this infrastructure is the key to exploiting Tilt Rotor's characteristics. As far as a future heliport development uh, is concerned, it will evolve through the, through the natural process, which is local community support through the FAA uh, regions to the headquarters where the, the proposal to build uh, downtown heliport or publicly owned heliport will be included in what we call our national plan of integrated airport systems. Another significant hurdle is Federal Aviation Administration certification of a commercial tilt rotor. Uh, over the years we have developed an interim criteria for powered lift and uh, we intend uh, at this point to use that uh, as the baseline for uh, determining the uh, certification criteria for a civil tilt rotor. Of course we'll take, uh, take all we can get from the experiences of the V-22 uh, as we go along. I think, it might, I think it might be good to point out, though, that in, in, um, in coming to the decisions that we will ultimately come to on the appropriate certification standards, our end objective is to give the traveling public the level of safety that's consistent with what they now enjoy in fixed-wing transport category aircraft. Uh, the details, which uh, will require a lot of work, a lot of public conferences, uh, will, will be tailored to the tilt rotor technology. But our, our basic safety objective is to give the, the traveling public uh, transport category level of safety. In Europe, serious efforts are underway. Several aerospace concerns have formed a consortium called Eurofar to develop and build a civil tilt rotor. This group recognizes that tilt rotors represent an entirely new transport system requiring public acceptance, new facilities, and new rules, as well as revolutionary new aircraft. The performance of the XV-15 at Paris in 1981 was an impetus to this venture. The countries represented are almost mirror images of Airbus Industry, a consortium that has and is carving out a large slice of market share in the passenger jet business. The French uh, have had an interest in the tilt rotor technology for a long time. In fact, they've done a lot of research in this area. But recently, six European helicopter companies have gotten together and formed an entity called Eurofar. That stands for the European Future Advanced Rotorcraft. Uh, and they're a very powerful group of companies with a lot of technical expertise. And their objective is to design and build an 18 to 25 passenger tilt rotor commuter aircraft uh, to capture that potential market out there. Presently, their timeline uh, looks at uh, having an aircraft fly in the early 90s and to be able to uh, have that, I, I believe, in the 95 to 96 time frame. Uh, so we're looking at a very real threat uh, to having the European countries capture a large portion of that market. Uh, in addition, the Soviets have been uh, identified as having an interest in the tilt rotor technology. At the 1981 Paris Air Show, where we took the XV-15 and demonstrated that technology to the world. One of the Soviet engineers there told me that for a long time he had wanted to start a tilt rotor program in the Soviet Union and perhaps now he could. Since that time uh, there have been reports in the press that the Soviets have two tilt rotor designs, the MI-30 and the MI-32. Uh, so the interest there is considerable. 
Why is it so important for the United States to take the lead in developing civil tilt rotors? One segment of U.S. industry that has held its own with respect to the balance of trade has been aerospace. For years, the U.S. built the free world civil jet planes, helicopters, and short-haul aircraft. Today, we see tremendous inroads being made into the U.S. market share by very high-quality aircraft built in countries like Brazil, Spain, France, Britain, Ireland, Italy, and Sweden. If the U.S. does not capitalize on its lead in tilt rotor technology and do so quickly, many experts feel that U.S. commercial operators will end up buying civil tilt rotors from foreign manufacturers. Well, I really think that that is very possible uh, because the, um, the uh, countries such as Europe really see the potential, uh, favorable uh, potential that the vehicle has in their country. And they are addressing it from a national standpoint and really focusing on the civil applications. Whereas we, of course, are concentrating on the military version, which is, of course, very important also. But the fact that they're addressing the civil version and their economic system is different in that they have uh, essentially a partnership of the civil uh, industry with the government and the government underwrites the high risk of uh, such developments really um, does uh, offer a very strong possibility that they would be first in the marketplace. With a 30-year development history and the successful track record of the XV-15 proof-of-concept tilt rotor, it is clear that this technology is ready for widespread application. The opportunities in both the military and civilian markets here and abroad are numerous. If the United States capitalizes on the current technological advantage it now enjoys due to the investment and efforts of the private sector and government by following the V-22 program with an aggressive and systematic approach to a civil program, the U.S. could realize significant economic benefits. Civil tilt loader success hinges on the development of a completely new and independent transportation network of vertiports and ground access. Support for tilt loaders is widespread, but some question its high purchase costs relative to payload. Others doubt whether developing a completely separate air transportation system is possible. The military's commitment to tilt rotors is definite and for the long term. Many feel that we're barely scratching the surface of tilt rotors' military potential. For example, gunships and small, remotely piloted tilt rotors could appear in the next wave. The Soviet Union has confirmed by imitation the tactical value of this emerging aircraft type. In the late 1940s, some felt that the helicopter was only an interim and limited answer to the need for vertical flight. They believed a convertible aircraft combining the vertical lift of helicopters with the efficient high-speed horizontal flight of airplanes would someday emerge as an entirely new and distinct chapter in aviation history. They waited and worked for over 40 years to achieve that dream. The age of tilt rotor is now.